Thumbnails, thumbnails, thumbnails. You see them all over YouTube. But you're probably wondering, how do I make a rec room thumbnail? Well, today, I'll teach you how. I got you. Alright, start off by making a plan. What's your video going to be all about? What do you want to have in your thumbnail? Just kind of think about it. Once you've got that figured out, it's time for the next step. Taking photos. If you're aiming to feature your Rec Room character, someone else's character, or anything Rec Room related in your thumbnail, for taking pictures, I suggest checking out YouTube template or green screen wall. I recommend taking your photos with two times zoom on to make yourself bigger or other things bigger and not zoomed all the way out. After taking your photos, go to rec.net on any browser, navigate to your photos on your account, right click on the desired photo and select save image as, then save it. Also for background images, that's for you to decide what you want your background to be. Moving on to choosing a program. Photo P is a great budget-friendly option, but if you're in the mood for something fancier and have some cash to spare, give Adobe Photoshop a look. But for today's tutorial, we are going with Photo P. Keep in mind, this will require a laptop or a computer because phones will not work as I have already tried. Trust me, phones will not work. Head to www.photop.com and click open from computer. Once you click open from computer, your file explorer will pop up. Find the background you chose and click open. Don't worry if a bunch of stuff pops up, we'll get to all of that later. Now as for the green screen photos you took, it's time to drag and drop them in. It's pretty easy. Head to the top left corner where it says file, then click on open in place. This will open your file explorer. After that, just drag the file to the center. You can also drag in multiple files. Now comes the part where I call torture. It's not really that bad. It's just a bit slow depending on how you do it. Cutting. I've got two ways to recommend. First, the polygonal lasso select, and second is the magic wand. The magic wand is usually the quickest and easiest. Go up top where it says tolerance, and if you turn it up or down, it changes how much it gets rid of. I usually go with about 70. Now start selecting the green bits, and then do control X to remove them. Keep in mind, it might make the edges around subjects a bit scuffed, so my usual go-to is the polygonal lasso select. Essentially, you trace and click all the way around until it meets the point where you started. Do Control c Control v to make a copy of your selected trace. After that, just delete the other layer. Now that you have a cutout of your subject, it's time for positioning. To start, select your layer, then head to the top left corner where it says Edit. A bit down, find Free Transform and click it. You will see a blue square with tiny white squares around your subject. Make sure to click the chain icon if you don't want your subject to stretch when dragging white boxes. To move your subject, put your cursor in the middle and hold down left click to drag it where you like. For scaling, drag any of the small white boxes on the edges while holding down left click. If you want to rotate, move your cursor to the outer rim of any corner and a curved double sided arrow should appear. Drag around to adjust the angle. I recommend making your subjects big in the thumbnail since YouTube thumbnails are pretty small. Now if you want to add text to your thumbnails, let's dive into text. I personally prefer letting the subjects tell the story in my thumbnails so I don't use much text. However, if you're into it, adding text is simple. Just press the T icon on the left side, then check out the top left corner for all the text settings. You got font, font size, and size. Those are the only three I really mess with. Choose your desired size by typing in any number, but do not go over a thousand because that's just like why? Now, for fonts, where it says Deja Vu Sans, a list will pop up with tons of fonts. Click one you like, or if you've downloaded a font, click Load Font to the right. Find your downloaded font, click Open, and it should take a second to load. Now for the text, just click anywhere to summon the text, type out what you like, and that's about it. Now here's what you've got to think about. How exactly do you want the style to look? Do you want your characters or objects to have an outline? No outline? Or a drop shadow? Be oversaturated? Less saturated? That question gets answered by choosing a style. But here is how to do coloring, lighting, and effects. Coloring slash lighting. This is a pretty straightforward process. Start by selecting your layer, head to the top left corner where it says image, then go to adjustments. And a whole list should pop up. My focus usually revolves around brightness slash contrast, exposure, vibrance, hue and saturation, color balance, and black and white. I'll quickly explain through each one. Brightness slash contrast alters the brightness or contrast of your subject. Exposure, similar to brightness, but it pops out more. Vibrance, intensifies specific less saturated colors. Hue, saturation, and lightness. Hue shifts the overall color tone. Saturation adjusts the intensity of all colors. And lightness controls the brightness or darkness of the colors. Color balance, shadows, adjust the color balance in the darker areas. Midtones, 
fine tune the color balance in the mid range tones and highlights modify the color balance in the brighter areas black and white basically makes your image black and white depending on how you tweak it now that you have tweaked your coloring and lighting it is time for the fun parts effects click on your layer to the right side and a list will pop up go ahead and select blending options at the top revealing a bunch of effects from bevel and emboss at the top down to 3d at the bottom these are the juicy spicy effects that many rectubers like to use i'll quickly go through each effect bevel and emboss adds a cool lighting effect on your character stroke the classic popular effect the good old outline inner shadow speaks for itself adds an inner shadow inner glow Adds an inner glow. Satan. I don't even mess with this one because I don't know what it really does. Kind of just adds a black overlay, but I don't really know. Color overlay. Lets you add any color you want over the subject. Gradient overlay. Allows you to throw in any gradient over the subject. Pattern overlay. I don't mess with this one either, so feel free to just mess around with it. Outer glow. Adds an outer glow to your subject. Drop shadow. Puts a shadow behind your subject. 3D. I think this one's new. I'm still playing around with it a bit, but it adds some sort of like 3D perspective behind your character. It's pretty cool. Now that you've got these cool effects, it's time to move on to exporting. Head to the top left corner where it says file, then go down to export as, name the file whatever you want, change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. Your file explorer should pop up, just click save again, and you're all done. If you're curious about adding a custom thumbnail to your YouTube video, Check out the link in the description. That video should help you out. If you need help with anything, DM me on Discord, Juju in VR. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember to use code Juju on Recruit. And I'll catch you later. Peace. Wow.